I think this is the first month this year that I've actually just stuck to my TBR. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to A Fictional Escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is all about the books that I read in the month of April 2022. As I said at the very beginning of this video, this is the first month of the year where I did stick to my TBR and I didn't stray at all. I did not get to the wild cards, shocking I know, but I did read all seven books that I had planned for the month. Scraping in, I just scraped in that last one on the 30th, which was yesterday at the time of filming. I finished it at about four o'clock in the afternoon, so we, we got there. The first book that I finished off this month was Jade War by Fonda Lee. Um, I do have to say, after listening to Jade City and then I started to uh, read physically and then the experience was not as enjoyable as the audio route, so maybe if you're not enjoying the physical books, of the Greenbone Saga, the audio route is excellent, or at least I found that it greatly heightened my experience of the stories. Um, so I went back to audio for Jade War. This was very good. It basically takes Jade City's concept uh, of you know Jade and and the family mafia s style fantasy that was pretty much just in Kay Con and John Loon, and we're getting that idea of what's happening in the family and how it affects everyone in the family and then just branches it out and takes it to a much bigger level where we're starting to look at different countries and how it affects different countries and, and different clans more so and basically just takes it from here to here in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. Um, I never read that there was a blurb by or an endorsement by Anne Leckie on the back which is interesting because Anne Leckie's a sci-fi author. Anyway, I digress. I am really, really enjoying the Greenbone Saga for what it is. I can definitely see why it's not for everybody, um, but I am really engrossed in the story and how much bigger it is going to get in Jade Legacy, so I'm very much looking forward to continuing the series. I'm about 13 chapters in Jade Legacy at the moment, and already it's just insane. So I'm excited and sad that it's concluding, but that is the first book that I read in the month of April. The next book I read in the month of April was A King's Radiance by Luke Schultz. This was my favourite read by far for the month. This is a debut grimdark uh, author whose book is releasing on the 21st of May, I want to say. I will have a review for this book up on release day, but it is following three siblings. They're all trying to do uh, different things. There is a very cool magic system, which is simple in execution, but also devastating. The humour is really well placed, but I don't want to go in too much. I will have a full review, like I said, on the 21st of May, so do look out for that one. The next book I read was also an e-book. I was finishing up the NetGalley arc of Prison of Sleep by Tim Pratt. That is book number two in the Zaxney Delatry duology. This is a multiverse sci-fi story, and I will have a full review up for this one as well later this month but all my reviews are up on Goodreads and Storygraph. If you're interested, those links are down below. Basically, at the end of book one, we're introduced to another character, and then it centers around a dual timeline and a dual POV. So we have Anna, and we also have uh, Zaxony as they try and... They've been split up, an event has happened, and they're trying to find each other. There's one timeline in the past and one in the present. I enjoyed the structure of the storytelling more in book two, but I probably enjoyed book one more in terms of originality. And in book one, they really played with the multiverse. They give us a lot of new worlds, um, very well described and just had fun with it. Whereas book two was very much more of a plot driven book and it was enjoyable. I gave them both, I think a 3.5. I may have rated book one a little bit higher than that, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was it was enjoyable and I'm glad that I read it. It has made me curious about Tim Pratt's other works, but I believe that's more sort of spacey sci-fi and I've only read one space opera so far from that video, so I'll need to explore that genre a little bit more before jumping into Tim Pratt's other works. The next thing that I listened to uh, during the month of April was 
book three of the Millennium Trilogy, The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. I don't want to give away too much, so in case you haven't read it, I highly recommend the series. Even if you're mainly a fantasy reader, it was very, very enjoyable. I found the narration to be very enjoyable as well. Um, I probably liked book one the most, then book three, and book two was my least favourite of the trilogy. Um, the Girl Who Kicks the Hornet's Nest takes place after book two. So we basically have uh, Salander is in hospital and she's on trial. And then we have Mikkel Bloomquist trying to basically prove her innocence and help her out. But it's very hard when she's in the hospital. So uh, a good description of this, again, is part espionage novel, part thriller, part mystery. Um, very good. It does still read like a police report or what you would expect a police report to sort of look like. Very structured, very detailed. Uh, less coffee in this one. I enjoy both of these on audio. The first physical book that I read in the month of April was The Blood of the Spear by Mark Timoney. I will have a full review for this one out as well, so I won't go into too much detail. That cover is absolutely stunning, and this is a scene that happens in the book, which is very, very cool. We're basically following a, a band of young people as they are running away because the two brothers have uh, a mark on their hand, an ancient mark, which people who have these marks uh, tend to end up dead. They they don't like these marks very much at all for reasons which I can't go into. Listen to the review. And so they're sort of on the run and there's a group of young people who are discovering themselves. I really like the character development. The biggest takeaway for me from The Blood of the Spear was just how good the world building is. Um, and so a lot of people will say that there are lore dumps and there are lore dumps as you're reading through the book but to me they really enhance the world you can definitely see the author has a, a big love for world building which comes out here and i'm a big world building nerd so that really really worked for me i think i ended up giving this one uh, a four star but yeah i really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to the next one in the series i had to put the groceries away mid filming and i have a cookie okay the next book I read, the second last book that I read in the month of April is Shadow's Edge by Brent Weeks. This is book two in the Night Angel trilogy. Now, in the first book, The Way of the Shadows, it basically got split in the halfway mark. And the first half was sort of a coming of age story of this character, Kyla Stern, as he becomes an apprentice wet boy, which is a an assassin, but better. And he's learning the way of killing essentially but doing it in intelligent ways and then the second half of the book is a political coup it basically follows this big event with a lot of political players and Kyla is set to kill certain people and then it sort of ends there with this one we see Kyla trying to escape that life and it is sort of split not half half but I would say the first 30% of the book is Kyla trying to start a new life with uh, the woman that he loves and his adopted child, Uli, basically. And then he keeps getting the call to kill because it's in his nature, it's what he's been trained to do. And he's promised the woman that he loves that he will try and not, um, but he keeps getting called back to it. So that's the first 30% and then something happens where he's basically called back to do this job. An old friend has thought to be alive when previously they were thought to be dead. So Kyla goes, well, I have to go back because this person was, you know, my best friend. So he goes back and he, he tries to save this friend. In amongst all this, without giving too much away, in case you haven't read it, is this political unrest is growing and we have the God King, who's like the big bad, who's trying to take over the world. He's just very much showing his own power, showing that he can create these creatures of war um, and the, the stakes are just heightened very, very much. So, very enjoyable read. I probably stick with a four rating for these. Gave the first one a four, gave this one a four. I can see where the criticisms come from in terms of uh, like whitewashing and misogyny and whatnot, but remembering that these are all products of their time, it reads very quickly, it reads very enjoyably. Can see where the criticisms come from, but I had a good time with it. So that was the second last book 
that I read this month. The final book that I read was uh, No Place for Peace by Tom Dumrell. I did start this one and get to about 40%. It wasn't that it was unenjoyable, I just don't think that my brain was quite ready to have more than two stories. I tend to read three books at a time. I'll have an ebook, a physical book, and an audio book, but my brain wasn't coping with the third. So I put it down and then read from 40% to 100% yesterday and being able to focus solely on that book made it so much more enjoyable. This one takes place a couple of weeks after the events of The Look of a King and we have Cyrus who's going to meet with King Simeon as agreed and he basically thinks that he's going to be thrown in a dungeon and uh, he is met with compassion rather than being thrown in a dungeon and he's given a task for King Simeon. I can't tell you what that task is because it leads into the rest of the book, but just know that I will have a full review out for this one as well. Anything that is self-pub or an e-arc that I receive will get its own dedicated review. So that'll be coming out later this month. Had a very good time with this one. I rated it at a 4.25. Tom Dumrell is very good at the fast paced fantasy. It's not uh, complicated in that a new fantasy reader can't pick it up. It's very, very approachable. Uh, the plot just goes point after point after point after point. Sometimes you want a little bit more in those points, but I think if you're new to the genre, you like a fast paced read, it, it does what it's meant to do very, very well. He's also very good at building up emotions and then like stabbing you in the heart. So there's that. If you like a bit of devastation, then these are good books to pick up. But that is what I read in the month of April. What did you read? I hope you enjoyed everything that you read in the month of April and I will see you in May. If you like the video, give it one of these. If you want to see more of it, then click uh, subscribe at your will and I will catch you in the next one. Ciao.